Have the police lied to you? Did the public defender not uphold the law? Did you hate tucking in your shirt? Well, then at the law offices of Nicholas Bosell, we will fight for your right to party. Here at Bosell and Bosell, we just thought it was cool to say my last name twice, but it's just me. And we don't care about laws, bro. We will just spew out what we Googled the day before from the public library. So give us a call and get your free consultation. Our office is located next to the Taco Bell in downtown Detroit. Uh, people versus Nicholas Christian Bosell. We are here today for a final pretrial conference and we are proceeding partially in person and partially by Zoom. Uh, first, I have the attorneys place their appearances on the record, uh, beginning with Mr. Sneed. Isaac Sneed for the people. John Van Dusen on behalf of Mr. Balsam. Uh, All right, and sir, you are Nicholas I Christian. You are Nicholas Christian Bosell. You are Nicholas Christian Bosell? Yes, I stated that I did not require any legal aid or anyone to speak for me on my behalf. All right, so at the moment, the Public Defender's Office has been assigned to you, and right now they represent you. Uh, they represent you until I, I allow them to withdraw or allow you to represent yourself. Um, so we'll talk about that um, right now. Ms. Van Dusen, um, how does Mr. Bosell wish to proceed today? Uh, Your Honor, at this time, Mr. Bosell is wishing to um, dismiss our office and represent himself. Uh, he is under the claim that um, the defense attorneys can actually dismiss cases, and that's not the case of this. So it has to go to trial um, if that's what he wishes. That is not what I said. All right, let, let's just don't don't respond to her. Let me ask you some questions, okay? Um, Mr. Bosell, is it accurate that you wish to uh, no longer be represented by the Public Defender's Office? That is correct, Your Honor. Uh, are you going to hire your own attorney? No, Your Honor. Do you intend to represent yourself? Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand you have a right to an attorney? Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand that if you can't afford an attorney that I would appoint the Public Defender's Office and I have done that? Yes, Your Honor. Where I apologize, probably the district court judge did that. Why is it that you wish to discharge the public defender's office at this time? There have been several instances where my words have not been taken into account or like when my lawyer would be speaking on my behalf, there are several times where he did not disclose to the courts things that I had wished him to, such as the fact that the, the very first call to the to the police in my record stated that the individual had green hair and shorts and was on a skateboard and that did not match my description. The fact that I was threatened by a police officer when I was stopped for not providing my ID, that's a threat and I'm a private citizen and he is a public figure. I do not need to provide my ID over a threat. He threatened to arrest me of obstruction of justice. And last but not least, there is body cam footage of Kelly Sneed, the owner and operator of the shelter where this incident took place off of her property, making slander statements towards me to the police officers that have no truth or validity to it, and she has no way of knowing if they have truth or validity to it, making jokes. This is on body cam that I had had subpoenaed 19 days after I was in, after I was arrested, and this did not come with my 21-day notice of discovery, and after which Mr. Schneid offered me a uh, personal recognizance bond, and none of this was brought to light, and this is another reason why I've, oh, and uh, I have received several deals Let's say I'm not getting a felony, but there's no, there's been no evidence provided, there's been no physical evidence provided against me. And my lawyer was telling me, um, top, um, Matt Murphy was telling me that I about, I about have a 5% chance of not going to prison. So on that note, I do not think I would be caring for the public defender's office. You're right. Do you understand, Mr. Roussel, that you are charged with assault with a dangerous weapon, also known as felonious assault? Yes, I am. Do you I'm also that? aware that Mr. Roussel, no Mr. Roussel, I'm asking some questions and I want direct answers and nothing further. If there's an appropriate time later, I'll give you some time to speak. You need to further understand right now that anything you say during this hearing can be used against you if and when we get to the trial that's coming up, all right? Yes, Your Honor. You understand the maximum penalty for assault with a dangerous weapon is up to four years in prison and or a $2,000 fine. Yes, Your Honor. You've also been charged with 
uh, assaulting, resisting, or obstructing a police officer. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. You understand the maximum penalty for that offense is up to two years in prison and or a two thousand dollar fine. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, again, you understand you have the opportunity to consult with a retained lawyer, or if you can't afford one, we appoint a public defender's office. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Bussell, do you have any training in the law? Study. Your Honor. When, when have you studied? My, my mother has like been in the courts like her whole life. I've been in foster care my whole life. I just wanted to know. I've always I've always researched. I've always checked my rights. I've always checked my laws. And I know that they have definitely been violated here. Do you understand that the law in this case consists of the criminal statutes that you've been alleged to violate, the Michigan court rules regarding criminal procedure, rules of evidence, and any number of other court decisions that interpret those statutes and rules? Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand that if I allow you to represent yourself, you're going to be required to uh, follow all of those statutes and court rules and, and interpretations of the laws? Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand that the prosecutor that's going to try this case uh, has a lot of education, has been to law school, has passed the bar, um, and has spent a number of years studying specifically and being trained in the law? Yes, Your Honor. If I might add, I do believe it's a conflict of interest for Mr. Isaac Smith to be working on the case because it is his wife that has been seen slanderizing me on the side again. But it's stop. I told you a couple minutes ago that I'm going to ask you questions and I want answers to my questions. I will give you time later to tell me the other things that you want to tell me. Yes, Your Honor. But I don't want you to further interrupt these proceedings by interjecting the things that you want to interject. Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand that uh, all of those statutes and court rules that I've discussed will uh, control certain things like whether you're allowed to ask certain questions or admit documents or photographs or other evidence that you might have to try to admit at trial? Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand that you're going to be responsible for the jury selection process? I'm not entirely sure how that works, Your Honor, but yes. You don't understand how the jury selection process works? As I assumed, it would just be a piece of paper that we sent out to randomized individuals, and that is what would happen. You understand that at the start of a trial, the court selects a jury, and that that is done through question and answer session with a number of jurors, and that each side has a right to challenge jurors for certain reasons uh, and excuse jurors for no reason at all. Have you ever been through a process like that? Have I been selected for jury duty? No, Your Honor. And, but that is the process you are right, yes. Have you ever seen a jury selection process take place? No, Your Honor. Do you understand that as a part of the trial, uh, the court is going to read instructions to the jury about the law that applies to this case and how they're, suppo they're supposed to conduct their business, and that the parties are responsible for submitting their proposed jury instructions? Do you yes, understand Your the jury instructions that would apply to this case? Yes, Your Honor. What are those? It would apply that they would be to prosecute me to the full extent of the law if the evidence is there provided with the crime. Have you ever read the model criminal jury instructions for the state of Michigan? I'm not, Your Honor. You understand that if you try to do this without a lawyer, you're going to be at an extreme disadvantage? Yes, Your Honor. You understand that I would compare that disadvantage to um, myself trying to, uh, I don't know, beat Steph Curry at a game of horse. 
Yes, Your Honor. What I mean by that is you may have studied, but you're not a professional in this. You understand that? Yes, Your Honor. You understand the prosecutor is a professional in this and has experience trying cases, has experience uh, with deciding which jury instructions are appropriate in a certain case and which instructions aren't. Uh, experience with selecting jurors, challenging jurors, um, and all those things, and that you just don't have that experience. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, do you still want to represent yourself? If I could speak for you for one second. Go ahead. Go ahead. I would rather represent myself dumbly and loosely than not have my wishes represented at all. Well, do you understand that when you well, use your words dumbly and loosely, that if you do something in an attempt to admit evidence into the court that doesn't comply with the rules because you're not aware of the rules that apply, that you might not be able to, to present that evidence to the jury. Well, absolutely, Your Honor. And that if you had a lawyer who knew how to do it correctly, they would be able to present that evidence to the jury. Yes, Your Honor. As, as far as I'm, I was aware, Mr. Murphy told me that there was be no more time gap or time limit or anything like the, the deadline is already passed for evidence to be received in this case for evidence to have already been brought to the court. I don't know if that's true either because he told me that my court date for today was on the 10th. That's when I went and fired him. I don't understand what you're telling me. He has given me misinformation several times. They told me that there's no there's no getting evidence, no, no more evidence on my behalf to this case. And that my jury by trial would be on the 10th of this month, and that day is done past. I had to come all the way up here to find out, like up to the to the third floor to find out that it was not until this day, which was my pre-trial. All right, so that's one of the reasons that you don't want the public defender's office to represent you. I believe they're misrepresenting, misrepresenting me, and yes, Your Honor. Do you know what standby counsel is? I do not, Your Honor. Uh, so that is would be that the public defender's office would sit in on the trial and if you ran into an issue that you didn't know how to deal with, uh, they could consult with you or address that issue. That would be fine. All right. Your Honor, our office does not do standby counsel. The reason for that is uh, the defendant can easily grieve us on that for saying that we gave them uh, bad information. So what it is called is inadequate uh, counsel, and that's what he would probably say in this case. We do not do standby counsel, and our grant does not pay for us to do it. In fact, we have law on it at this time.
I am going to uh, take a break from this case for just a moment. I've got um, I've got to take care of a case with an MDOC inmate before I lose them. So, Mr. Post, I'll ask you to uh, just take a seat back where you were for a few minutes. Let me take care of this case, and I will come back to you as quickly as I can. The law offices of Nicholas Bozel, we don't win, but we sure think we do. Make sure to like and subscribe to Time Served.